Joining me now is Ingrid Hibbard. Hello, how are you? Can I get a handshake? Uh -huh, of course you can. So we are currently sitting in a laneway where I just picked you up behind your condo. Yes, you did. We're gonna go for a drive. We're gonna talk about the company. We're gonna talk about your experience, management, everyone who's on your team and your projects. And we also have a fresh news release from the company. Yes, we do. That we're gonna cover. Yes. And the company's name is Palangio. Palangio Exploration. It's been around since 1937. I can't wait to hear about it. Let's go. Let's go. So I think one of the questions I had for you, since you've been in the business for so long, um, what's, how have things changed now uh, being a woman in the industry? Uh, well, you know, um, it was an advantage and a disadvantage uh, in the early days because I stuck out in people's minds because there were so few of us. Um, but you were a bit of an anomaly, so sometimes that was in a disadvantage. So there, it's great to see many, many more women. You know, when I was on first on the board of Detour, I was the only woman for quite a long time. And it's great to see other women uh, joining. Uh, you know, there's some great, even technical people, you know, they're... Uh, Natasha Vaz, now at uh, Agnico Eagle, is a great COO, mm -hmm. great technical person. So it's, it's great to see more women coming into the industry. That's fantastic to hear. Um, why don't we sort of start now with how you got in the business, your background, and some of the companies that you were, uh, you've worked with. Uh, well, so uh, I grew up in Timmins, so that's kind of the start, because you're surrounded by mines. Timmins is not only just a, a mining town, but it really is the center of exploration. And uh, my dad was a prospector. So I was, you know, it was preordained after that kind of excitement of staking rushes. And, you know, as a kid, I'd be coloring maps for him and, and they'd be planning, uh, you know, to fly into the bush to stake claims to beat everybody else. So everything else seemed kind of boring, to be honest, by comparison. Um, but I uh, knew right away that I was not a geologist. That wasn't my forte. It was more the deal side. So I did go off to law school. What and school? I went to Western. Okay. Uh, although I did my last year at the University of Manitoba, which was a bit odd, but great to be in more than one place. And uh, uh, Were you chasing love? I was indeed. I had gotten married. My husband got a job in, in Winnipeg. There you go. All right. <laughs> Why else would you leave London, Ontario to go to Winnipeg? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although, you know, I thought coming from Timmins, Winnipeg was going to be a breeze. I thought I knew cold. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. So anyway, so um, I did my last year at U of M and... Uh, then when I got through law school, well, I had came back to Ontario, had to re-article, had my son while I was um, doing bar ads again. You know, it's efficient, multitasking. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, f uh, articles with what it was Smith Lyons then for uh, my second round of articles. And then I joined a, a, a junior company with multiple companies. Uh, and so that was really good experience, a whole host of junior companies. And I had already started drafting agreements for my dad oh, when yeah. I was in high school kind of thing. Uh, so I, I had a knowledge of the industry that most other lawyers wouldn't have had. Sure. Right? So and you already had a pathway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so uh, after that, um, I thought, I'm going to start my own practice. Uh, which I did, and you're really busy starting your practice for a while, then you realize, well, you actually need clients. <laughs> <laughs> and I was extremely lucky because my first or second client was Naranda, which was oh, a yeah. major, yeah. major mining company at the time. So I got great experience drafting contracts with them. Then I joined and became uh, part of the executive team corporate secretary for Hemlo Gold. And finally, uh, and doing a little bit, my dad was running Palangio ahead of me, uh, before me, mm -hmm. and he passed away suddenly. And so I was juggling kind of running Palangio and doing some work for Hemlo and a few other clients. And I, eventually I just, I couldn't do it. Uh, 
you know, it was too much. Yeah. And um, then Briex happened. So I had about six months of running a junior mining company that seemed kind of easy. Yeah. Then Briex just killed the market. Like there was just nothing. So um, our VPX at the time, Kevin Filo, and I looked at each other one day and we had this great little property up at Detour. Right, uh, right beside the uh, Detour Mine, owned by Placer Dome. Okay. And it was in a joint venture with Placer, and we thought things were going great guns, except Placer decided to close the mine. So, with still some potential there, there was a million ounces in it, and there was some underground potential, and and they had this huge, massive land package, um, and it was really relatively underexplored. It had only been discovered to be part of the Abbott Tibby Greenstone Belt in the 70s. So we looked at each other and said, do you think we could buy that? Mm -hmm. Except we had about $5 in the bank at the time. So... Uh, you went and raised some money? Well, we got luckier than that. So we knew that even raising money in this market was going to be extremely difficult. So we managed to do a deal with Franco Nevada. Okay. And uh, we did a joint venture with them. Uh, they were excellent to deal with. David Harkwell was first class. You know, we talk about our handshake deal. Yep. And um, if without their help, Detour wouldn't exist today. Uh, they allowed us to, to uh, buy it and funded us for three years. And then when, as per the deal, you know, when they decided they wanted out, we simply had to pay them back, some of which we paid with shares, and uh, we paid them back what they'd put in, and they kept the royalty. So it was a huge win for them, because it turned out to be a monster mine. I mean, when we bought it, it was yeah. you know a million ounces. And we looked at it as, uh, we, it took a long time. We took several years looking at it. We hired uh, Eric Callio to help us with the resource. And at the time, there wasn't a lot of big pits in Canada, mm -hmm. but he had just finished looking at the dome, which was uh, going from underground, and then looking at it as a big pit. And that kind of gave him the idea to look at Detour instead as a, a big pit instead of an underground mine trying to make it all hang together. Uh, it took, but it did. We bought it in 98, and... You know, I, I walked Bay Street for a decade saying, you know, I think I've got a mining camp. I think this thing is going to turn out to be, you know, another Timmins camp. We've for, got something for special. For a decade? A decade. That must have been, I mean, <laughs> that would have been very frustrating. Uh, yeah. Well, no, be, uh, fr frustrating is beyond, you know. I mean, it was, it was hard. Wow. It was really hard. Uh, but we found, uh, you know, we found Franco that had kind of believed in the story, and then yeah. we found uh, uh, Hunter Dickinson and Gerald Pennington oh, yeah. that believed in the story. We spun it out to a brand new company called Detour Gold. Right. And for the shareholders, and you know, mining is long lead time. Yeah. Uh, so for our shareholders that believed and stuck with it for many, 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 it was a hundred bagger. Wow. So. Yep. I'm, I'm going to make a note here. I, I, we're going to link a video to this video, uh, the handshake deal video that you did. Um, uh, we're going to we'll put it here because, I mean, that way we don't tell the whole story. We'll just yep. throw it up there and you should take a look at this video. It's, um, it's pretty good. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I think so. If I do say so myself. So the mining sector is secular. So that hundred bagger, I mean, you've got to have massive patience to put up with that. But then you get massive returns potentially. But, uh, yes. And it worked out. It worked out. Wow. It worked out. And so that really set our um, uh, strategy on a go-forward basis. But I, I w did realize that the odds of having one key asset and having it turn out to be a, a detour mine mm -hmm. are kind of remote. Right. So, uh, you know, we've put together a bit more uh, uh, property portfolio in Palangio now. But we're, we're going through that same kind of cycle now yeah. where it's awful for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you were on the board of Kirkland Lake? I was, yes. So I was on the board of Detour for almost 11 years, I guess. And then I was on the board of Kirkland Lake for a couple of years. That, well, Lakeshore actually first. I was on the board of Lakeshore. That overlapped for a couple of years. 
And then when Kirkland Lake bought Detour, I joined the board of Kirkland Lake. Okay. So let's get into the company now, because um, you know you've got an extensive background in history. That's why I wanted to cover it. Um, lots of experience. You've been through so many different ups and downs in this market. You know it very well. Where are we now with this company? Let's do a little overview of the uh, of the company and, and what your strategy is and the people that you've got on board and what are you up to? So we we well. Where are we at? It feels like that terrible time again. But I, I think I'm seeing that we're closer to the end than the beginning of okay. the terrible time. But we are in that kind of terrible time where, you know, you, you just kind of have to dig deep because even, even gold bugs are starting to get tired of waiting. So uh, it, it's a tough market, but we've put together some great assets, really great assets. So post, um, post detour, and actually while detour was kind of happening, we were looking for another similar sort of opportunity. Where can we get a huge land package on one of the most prolific belts. Well, who doesn't want this? It's like, you know, who doesn't want a, you know, a giant diamond mine or something. Uh, so where can we get a huge land package on one of the most prolific gold belts that's underexplored? And um, remember, I told you my father was a prospector. Well, his little brother used to work with him uh, on occasion. And I think uh, Michael, thought that he would like to get out from my dad's shadows. So he was off working in Ghana, West Africa. Because okay. my experience up to then was solely in Canada. Right. And in Ontario, maybe. And prime land, yeah, really, in Ontario. Yeah. And um, so he brought us an opportunity uh, for two, well, 300 square kilometers on this prolific Ashanti belt in Ghana, West Africa. Ghana has been mining gold for longer than Canada. It's just, it's got gold, you know, right in its history. Uh, the Obwasi mine is was a first thirty years of production a hundred years ago was over one ounce per ton. Really rich mine, mined thirty million ounces so far. There's another thirty million ounces in resources in one high grade mine. It's a monster, and. So my uncle brought me this land package that he said some local Ghanaians wanted to sell to a Canadian junior. I went, oh, bonus. But if it hadn't been him, I would have thought it was a, a scam. You, you wouldn't have like, looked at it. Who, why would someone come to this little company in Ontario with a land package like that? You know. Right. So we went, we looked at it, um, yeah, we we negotiated and negotiated and negotiated to get it and uh, um, we've, we've been working away on it a uh, little bit less lately because it's early stage and it's like well if you can imagine how much money's been spent on Timmins in the last hundred years if you've right. got a land package that size you've got a lot of work to do so we have about 150 targets ahead of us Everywhere we've drilled, we've got gold, but we haven't gone through the, you know, the center of a fantastic shoot yet. Okay. So while we were doing that, I said, well, I think we need a second project in Ghana. And, you know, you do want to focus a little. We love Canada. Now we're in Ghana. We think maybe that's enough geographic uh, uh, diversity. So um, we got 100 square kilometers on the Sefwi belt, which is the, probably the second biggest belt in West Africa. Uh, um, it's host to Newmont's Ahafo and Ahafo North Mines and Ashanti's Bibiani and Chirano Mines. So a very prolific belt. We've got a 100 square kilometer land package there. And we've got, so it's really our flagship. We've got a uh, half a million ounce resource there. And that's where we're gonna be drilling right now. So that's the press release. We're going back to be drilling there now. Thousand meters, is it? Ten yes, yeah. so we're, it's not a huge program, but it's um, all around the existing resource. So the last program we did, so well, let me put, let me put it into perspective a little bit. So um, Manfo, the resources, almost exclusively, so primarily in two um, 
uh, two areas, two, uh, two deposits. So the bigger one is Poco East, and it's a little bit lower grade. And the smaller one is a higher grade, including, you know, well, some of the first holes we put in, one of the first holes we put into that deposit was uh, uh, 10 meters of 39 grams. So um, it's a higher grade. And recently, with this la the last drill program we did, we've discovered another load of mineralization down the plunge. So right. we want to go follow that up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't hit as high grade. We got sort of uh, seven meters over three, in, uh, within uh, three over 12. But it's a pretty nice start. So we're going to go back into that and a new load of mineralization we've discovered. To the south of that high, same high-grade portion, we've uh, encountered some nice high-grade oxide. So we're going to follow that up. And the two uh, deposits dip towards each other. So there's a nice soil anomaly between the two that hasn't been tested. So we'll test that. Okay. So it's not a lot of meters, but because it's all near surface, yeah. um, you know, we can do a lot of uh, testing with it. So a lot of uh, exploratory holes. Yeah, but hoping to expand the resource. Right, right? In, yeah. in the, so. Put some ounces in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, what about the technical team? Who's who's heading this off? I mean, you're in a, a jurisdiction over there where you need a lot of experience. So you know, we it's have different a, than here, right? Um, well, you you know you you need good people everywhere, right? Really, the, the real resource is your people. I mean, that's what that's the real power of a company is who do you have working right. with you? So, uh, Kevin Thompson is our uh, VP Exploration. He's um, from Canada. He worked at Noranda back in the day, but he, in fact, it was Hemlo Gold that originally sent him to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So he's been working in Ghana for probably 25 years, and he lived there for 12 years. So he worked with Newmont, did regional exploration for Newmont, and then he drilled off a, a number of resources for Perseus. So he knows Ghana really, really well. Sounds like it. 12 years. I mean, yep. yeah, wow, exactly. He lived there. Yeah, exactly. And um, our local, but he is, but he's living back in Canada now. We have a uh, VP Africa, Sam Tukarno, who is Ghanaian. He has his geological engineering degree from. Uh, uh, in Ghana, and an MBA in resource management from Freiburg, Germany, uh, runs his own consulting company, has consulted for you know tons of Canadian and Australian companies. Excellent, excellent guy, and he ha he takes care of things on the ground and, and builds us a local team as we need it. I mean, one of the things with an exploration company is you need to be able to expand and contract a little as, as need be. Yeah. And so having somebody who's really well connected mm -hmm. in country is mm -hmm. vital. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, one thing I want to uh, cover with you is the capital structure of the company. Uh, what's the market cap right now? Oh, it's crazy. It's about uh, $3 million. $3 million. And um, when it comes to the shareholders, like how much do you own of the company? Well, uh, myself, my family, we're around 10%, maybe a little bit more. And then if you get to sort of extended family and, uh, and uh, you know, long time associates and yeah. that sort of thing, we're getting to 20, 24, 24% kind of number. Okay. Um, any institutions in there or? Uh, very few. So uh, Alpha North has a little bit. But what we do have, and it's more recent, is uh, uh, because not all Canadians are comfortable. There's not, there's not as much familiarity with Africa. So there's not a lot of distinguishing sometimes between the various countries in Ghana. So we've ended up building up a stronger uh, British and European uh, group of investors. So I'd say that that's probably um, 30 to 45 percent of our shareholders are. So you have, there. so about, okay, so you have a pretty good grasp of about 50 percent of the float. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you spend quite a bit of time uh, in the IR season out in Europe? Um, well, you know, times are tough, so we're, we're pretty careful. So we, we work with a, a group out of Europe that kind of can handle that some of that just because they're there sure. out of Switzerland. Yeah, and I go once or twice a year. Okay, 
And uh, you know, when you go out there, where do you where do you like to go for the when you're doing like a little IR IR tour out there? Oh, so I haven't done an IR tour where you go and do one on ones in a long time, okay. really. Uh, they are expensive, so it's more uh, take advantage of the conferences Got and it. and do you know a bunch of one on ones at at say one to one. Yeah. So you can. You know, you don't have to kind of travel around quite so much. So that's what we've been doing. And uh, the other thing we're doing a whole lot more, along with everyone else, is more Zoom. Yeah. Uh, more online. Mm -hmm. uh, more this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where people hopefully can get to know you. Um, and you can get so much. Absolutely. And you can get a lot more re reach, too, if you work with the right people. Yep. You can get a lot of reach. And, uh, you know, you go to a conference, like, outside of PDAC, if you've got 5,000 attendees, that's considered a lot. Yeah. Um, but now, like I said, if you work with the right groups, you can get 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000, you know, views exactly. on, on, on a video. Yeah. video. Exactly. Um, but and, yeah, you know, so, and once they've seen me here, they can pick up the phone or send me an email or whatever. That was my next question. <laughs> uh, I, you probably enjoy talking to shareholders. Uh, well, you know, it's like kind of talking about your kids. <laughs> right. And it's this, right? this company is so close to your family, It's right? So yeah. you know it so well. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, and, uh, and we are, you know, when Sam comes to Canada now, he stays with my husband and I and, you know, uh, his wife, he and his wife have come over to, and now they've just had a new baby, which I'm getting really anxious to uh, meet. So uh, it, it does become part of, you know, it's part of your life, part of your family. So uh, where would you like to leave this interview off? Uh, if, you're, if you're talking to a potential new shareholder, someone who's, you know, watched this video or, or another video and is interested in the company but hasn't bought a share yet, what, what would you say to them? So, you know, we, this is... An, this is an ideal time. You know, everyone hates to buy at the bottom of the market, which is odd because is they odd. love to buy their socks on sale, but they hate to buy their stocks on sale. And I'm I don't there. get it. When you're going to acquire projects, where do you want to acquire acquire them? Yep. See. So we've got uh, you know three great properties, big land packages in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We've got a resource already, so it's not like there's you know there's no indication that there's gold. We've got a half a million ounces at two hundred thousand ounces in the indicated category already. Uh, we have a portfolio of smaller properties in Canada, but really well located. Some in Timmins because hey, that's still home. Yeah. I still have a place up there. So we've got uh, the geographic diversity of two really, really historic mining areas that are pro mining. Um, you know that uh, when you when you're walking around in Ghana, people are not afraid of gold mining. They're uh, uh, they can't wait for a mining uh, yeah. to sort of happen in their neighborhood. It creates jobs. jobs yeah. Look at what Detour did. You know, and, wealth created. And, Exactly. When yeah. you find a gold mine, you generate brand new wealth. Yeah. And typically the mines are not in downtown Toronto. So you're creating new wealth where there often is not a lot of wealth. Right. So, you know, I think that if there's anything that drives most of us in the industry, it, it's A, the thrill of, of uh, exploration and discovery and what you can do to people's lives. So the, the number, economy. the local economy, the number of people who, you know, have called me uh, with, you know, how that detour the first time changed their lives. They bought houses, they paid off their med school. Uh, you know, it's, it is amazing. Mm. What it, and you're just a small part of it, but it's pretty exciting. Um, do you have a open raise at this point or anything like that? If somebody wanted to invest with you guys that way, is there any, or? Not right now, but okay. you know, explorers always have another one. But right now, really, three cents. Uh, you know, the the market is where to go. Right. Uh, yes. And it, so you're getting a company with experienced management team, uh, longevity, uh, great projects, uh, great jurisdictions, uh, and you're buying at the bottom of the market. But you may have to be a little patient. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think about when we were talking about that 100x and how much patience. I think you talked about 10 years there. 10 you're, years. You're getting, you know, going hard on Bay Street for 10 years. Well, I think it's been a fantastic interview, an intro overview of the company. We've highlighted your management, your experience, uh, the projects a little bit. 
got to your recent news release uh, and you know how you're looking to add ounces, but kind of explore as well. Yes. And uh, where can everybody find you? What's the easiest place for someone to find you if they want to have a one-on-one with you? Um, look at our website, send us an email, and we'll set something up. Awesome. Well, I think, I hope that you have a fantastic <laughs> PDAC. Oh, I think we will. The weather know. is here as PDAC always brings us some, usually it's cold and windy. This year Look we got this, snow. Though. It's pretty right now with it the is. trees all covered in white. Winter, winter wonderland. But I do feel sorry when the guys come, like when uh, Sam isn't here this year. But, you know, poor Sam's had to buy a parka that he uses once every two years. Just, just for Toronto? <laughs> just for Toronto. That's funny. <laughs> okay, well, for, on behalf of our community, we'd like to thank you again, Ingrid. And uh, we'll leave it here. Awesome. Thanks for having me.